I'm Jamie, and you're watching Pretty Pink Acres. I'm out here in Cold Creek, Nevada, home to some of Nevada's wild horses. I've been a lover of horses my whole life. They have always inspired me since I was a little girl. So it's no wonder that this cowgirl was born to live in the West. The plight of America's wild horses has been a long one. This is not just about wild mustangs. This is about the preservation of historical legacy. With nearly five centuries of freedom, to call the Mustang a feral horse is not only wrong, it's a travesty. Left alone, the Mustang has evolved through natural selection, creating a breed that is not only known for their superior stamina, but their speed. Man has had no influence on the genetic evolution of the Mustang. To blindly state that they are feral domestic horses is simply a ploy by large commercial ranchers who want to desensitize the Mustang issue to steal grazing rights to increase their own wealth by running domestic herds on public lands. One half of the nation's wild horses are here in Nevada. Today there are approximately 45,000 wild horses roaming freely around the U.S. 35,000 of those horses are on federally managed land. It's sad to think that there were some two million roaming America at the turn of the century. Wild horses have roamed the western United States for hundreds of years, ever since the Spanish conquistadors brought them over in the 1500s. But really, the horse has a far longer history on this continent. The horse actually evolved on North America's continent and did not die out until about 10,000 years ago. The modern horses that arrived with the Spaniards were, in a way, just returning home. exactly why you do not feed the wild horses. <laughs> Look how close he's coming to me because he thinks I'm going to feed him something. It's not good. And here's cars coming on the road that could potentially kill this horse. The wild Mustang is the epitome of freedom and have always been an iconic part of American history. Yet sadly, the American Mustangs are disappearing from the West at a rapid pace with the help of the American government. Although iconic, the American Mustang has become a highly controversial subject. Many horse lovers, much like myself and conservationists, want these beautiful animals to remain free. Meanwhile, cattle ranchers are claiming the American Mustang is competition for their cattle's grazing land. Nowadays, with the help of planes and helicopters, the BLM, otherwise known as the Bureau of Land Management, is running these wild horses off their land and into holding pens. Tragically, many of these horses do not survive. The horses are forced to run at full speed with their foals alongside trying to keep up. They are torn from their families, badly injured and left dehydrated and malnourished in these government holding pens with little to no room to move freely. This is sadly no life for a wild Mustang. 
In 1971, Congress passed the Wild Free Roaming Horses and Burrows Act, giving legal protection to the Mustangs and sparing them from capture, harassment, branding, and death. Well, at least that's what it says on paper. Roundups, as they are called today, still go on. Interestingly enough, rangeland for the wild horses and burrows has declined, where millions of privately owned cattle graze on some 245 million acres of public lands. The BLM have leased many of these public lands to cattle ranchers, the lands that are meant to be protected for what's left of America's wild horses. These roundups are no doubt a very controversial topic because more often than not, they end up fatal for the horses that are supposed to be protected. The BLM claims to adopt these horses out once they are put into holding pens, but the harsh reality is, this process can take years. The BLM is permitted to sell the horses if they are not adopted out, and these horses most times are sold to slaughterhouses. All the facts pointing to this being done to make more room for more cattle. While it is true that proper management of the horse population is necessary, it is not true that these horses are competition for the cattle's grazing, nor are the horses damaging the ecosystem, which has been another faulty claim. The BLM has yet to provide any information of fact to justify this claim. Today, there are more Mustangs in government holding facilities than there are in the wild. These government holding pens cost American taxpayers $60 million per year. No one on either side of this debate, myself included, argue against utilizing a management strategy. It's clear that letting wild horses roam without population control or outside public lands would be a mistake. Yet there are smarter, more cost-effective, and most importantly, more humane ways of managing what's left of our wild horses. I encourage you all to do some research on the American wild horses. Educate yourselves on both sides of the debate. Help take action in protecting our wild horses before it's too late. There are some viable alternatives to BLM having to conduct these roundups. Fertility control. One strategy for controlling the herd size among wild horses is the use of a non-hormonal drug called PZP. That can be administered to mares. It's between 60 and 95% effective, safe, and reversible. This can dramatically reduce the population growth of wild horses. To administer in the wild, all you would need to do is be within shooting range using a dart from a dart gun. To the horse, the dart feels like the equivalent of a mosquito bite. The process would happen annually. The Humane Society of the United States economic model shows that if BLM used PZP as fertility control for the management of the wild horse population, they could reach management goals within 12 years while saving taxpayers an estimated $200 million. By eventual reduction or even hopefully elimination of the roundups currently being done and reducing or eliminating the long and short term holding facilities where the Mustangs are being held after these roundups. Putting real effort into fertility control would be more cost effective for BLM and the taxpayers who fund BLM's management of the wild horses. And of course, it would be much less traumatic and invasive for the wild horses. Not only is it not entirely the fault of the wild horses for the degradation of the public lands or its impact on other grazing species, but the existing protections that have been put forth long ago to keep mustangs safe are for the most part ignored, to the point that the breed is in rapid decline. While the arguments against wild mustangs seem to be loud and clear, there seems to be a much softer voice when it comes to those of us in support of the mustangs. For example, some questions like these have been asked. Is the wild horse a native species? Is it multi-century status enough for us to help push for its conservation? Does it even matter if it's feral, wild, or native when it comes to the wild mustang? What about the deep connection we feel to the horse? How does that factor in? The mustang is revered as such an iconic part of Western heritage. The equine has been a huge part of evolutionary history as well, 
not only as a companion, but as a fellow worker. Don't we owe it to them to preserve their land? I think so. Don't we owe it to them to provide them with the space to roam free? Again, I think so. How about the mere attraction of wild horses to the general public? This is an excellent opportunity for hands-on education and to pass that knowledge down among the younger generation. To gather additional support for the Mustangs that so need our help. Just being up here in Cold Creek, Nevada and watching the bands of wild horses roaming freely and the countless numbers of vehicles filled with people just hoping to catch a glimpse of these iconic, beautiful horses that they have read about in books throughout history, seen in countless movies, and heard about in legends. All of them hoping to be able to capture the special moment on camera. This is history, folks, right here. Within our reach, and we simply must do something to help before it's too late. If we allow our government to take away all of the wild horses until there is nothing left of them, what does that say about us? What will your children tell their children? When I was a little girl, all I ever wanted was a horse. I remember the day my parents got me one like it was yesterday. That horse, along with every other horse I've ever had throughout my life and the horses I have today, have all changed me in some form or another. Taught me, encouraged me, and at times challenged me. But throughout my life have always been the one constant, the one saving grace my best friends, my teachers, and my family. To bear witness to the disgrace of what we as a nation have allowed to happen to this iconic part of American history tugs at my heartstrings. Wild horses have a very complex family structure. The inhumane roundups don't respect the nature of the horse. To be torn from their families and be herded into waiting trucks, their eyes wild with fear. Being forced into these trucks and trailers with hundreds of other wild horses, barely room to move. Many of them are injured from the roundups themselves or inside these trucks. Many trampled because they are too injured to get up or there just simply isn't room to get up after all the other horses are packed in on top of them by use of an electric cattle prod. Many have separated from their babies and frantic. Many of the babies don't make it to the trucks and trailers because they simply can't keep up with the herd at the high speeds that the helicopters force them to run, and inevitably are left to fend for themselves without any protection from their mothers and will starve or fall prey to another animal. Imagine for a moment what it's like for a horse that's been in the wild its whole life to suddenly be ran to exhaustion, crammed into a moving truck with hundreds of other wild horses and taken to holding facilities where they are then crammed into small corrals where they cannot roam freely, many times left without forage to eat and water to drink for days at a time. Let's say that they are lucky enough to be adopted and taken home by someone who will work with them, care for them, and love them. That's a happy ending for that particular Mustang. However, sadly, this is not the case for the majority of these Mustangs. Imagine now those that do not ever get adopted, those that are then sold by the BLM, many to slaughterhouses. Repeat the trauma of being forced back into another truck and trailer, packed with more horses than there is room for, eyes again wild with fear, many injured, transported for sometimes days at a time without food or water and only to arrive to their doom. For these iconic parts of our history to watch and fear as the other horses are slaughtered. There are many methods that are used and many of them are not foolproof and must be done more than once to a single horse. The unimaginable suffering, pain, and fear is something that I cannot overlook. Can you? I believe it's time for folks to stop turning the other cheek. It's not something I would imagine anyone wants to think about, but pretending that it's not happening does not negate the fact that it is and that it does. The time is now for people to step up and have a voice for these horses that so desperately need our help. 
please take the time to do your research. I encourage you to visit some of the websites listed at the end of this episode. Sign petitions. Write your government officials. Take a stand for the Wild Mustang. million acres of wild horse and burrow habitat has been lost since 1971 when the Wild Horse and Burrow Act was established. 70% of herds are reduced below the genetic viability levels. At the end of this video, there are links to some helpful websites, as well as information on how you can help make a difference. Contact your state congressmen and women, the Senate, write a letter, speak up, help to make a difference. For me, the thought of the West without wild horses is just unimaginable, and for anyone else who has ever picked up a history book, there is nothing more stoic, more beautiful, or more majestic than a horse. They deserve to be free. I believe they've earned that right. Don't you? Long live the Mustang. I just had a little bit of an encounter with a few people up at the ponds. Uh, just as usual, feeding those horses, trying to throw carrots at them and chasing them down, making them run, trying to just get as close as they can so they can get their little snapshot to take home with. I mean, I'm just kind of blown away by the fact that nothing is ever done about this. There's no game wardens up there, there's no BLM representatives, there's no anybody up there to enforce the law. I don't understand why or what the benefit is of having a law to protect these horses in these burrows if there's nobody here to enforce it. I just got done yelling at three different people telling them you're not allowed to feed the horses. They're wild. You are not allowed to feed wild horses. There's signs all up and down this road do not feed or harass the wild horses in the burrows. Yet people continue to do it. And that is what is hurting these horses. That's what's getting them to come down into the roads, getting run over by cars. And these people don't care. They're gonna go back to their lives with their little snapshot, their little picture of them with the wild horse feeding them a carrot. And they're gonna go back to their normal lives. Meanwhile, these horses are endangered. They're going to be endangering their lives coming down to see who else is bringing them something good to eat. Who else is going to bring them the next carrot or the next flake of hay or whatever else these people are feeding them. And they don't care. And there's no one here to enforce it. And that's the sad part is that it's just going to continue to grow as a problem. Nobody cares. What really what we need to do is add more signs, have people up there enforcing these rules up there, especially up there at the ponds and driving these roads and enforcing it till people get a reality check about what's going on and understand that this is a law, people. These signs are not here as a suggestion. It's the law. You do not feed the wild horses in the burrows. You're not helping them, you're hurting them. And it's just so sad to me to see. It's so sad. I just. 
It really just blows me away the way that people just, they don't care.